what is PowerView? Well, PowerView is a Silverlight powered development environment that allows quick data changes and data layout changes with just a few clicks. It's 100% interactive. It's all web-based. And it allows the end users to manage and discover and share the reports very quickly through SharePoint. Now, the question that a lot of people will have is, PowerView, OK, who's going to be using this? And you know, in the past, I've been out to customer sites and say, hey, I'm really interested in uh, reporting services and giving this to our end users. And to be quite honest, reporting services isn't quite ready for the end users, or the end users aren't quite ready for for reporting services to start developing their own reports. But PowerView is available, and PowerView is ready for this. And the end users are ready for this. It's in a familiar environment. It's highly interactive. It gives rich presentations. And yes, end users can do this without any training. It's very, very simple. Pick it up and start using it. It also allows power users to go through. They can reuse what's already been done as flexible layouts. And it gives them very productive authoring capabilities. And of course, the IT will like it because, it's again, it's easy to use and it gives them a rich design capabilities inside of it. So the answer to this question of, of who's going to be using it is basically everyone within your organization. So let's go over. I'm going to switch over to a demo real quick, show you exactly what PowerView is all about. OK, let this load up for a minute. I've logged into my server. Uh, I'm sitting here. I'm looking at uh, some models that have been published out from by some end users. Um, whether they've been published or whether these models have been uh, published by an end user or whether they're corporately uh, maintained and managed uh, models, doesn't really matter. From an end user, I can't really tell one way or the other. What I'm presented with is an actual model, an option to actually open this up and, and, and work with it within Excel, or I'm able to go in and work with it within a, uh, with a PowerView. So today, we're going to go in and work with it within PowerView. I click on the PowerView icon. It then launches the Silverlight application, pulls the metadata from that model, and presents it to me in a familiar format. Now, if this looks a lot like your Office tools, it, it, it's very similar. It has a ribbon up top. It's got my metadata over here on the right-hand side where I can see. Um, it's got, uh, if I click on the cars here, it gives me my attributes of this particular dimension. And I have cells, so my fact data. I have different cells fact data. Now, if you're a developer and you're looking at this, you say, OK, where's my tools for me to drag and drop and say, OK, I want to add a title or I want to add a chart? Well, there isn't anything like that. So we're going to go in here. We're just going to click on this. And we're going to say car sales over time. And I want to be able to take a look at what my cars are. Uh, we're going to do some analysis of a dealership, that um, some dealership data that we have. So I'm going to click on cars in my metadata, and it's going to instantly populate my uh, report over here with some car data, my different uh, dimensional car information. All right, so from here, I can actually do some resizing if I want. And that's as simple as it is. I can go in and pull this information very, very fast. Now, if I wanted to, I have the fields that are available for, to me within this table. And I can go in here and drop a drop down list and say, remove this field. I can move it around. Uh, I can change the field's order. I can do sorting. But what I really want to do is this is taking up a lot of real estate in my screen. So I'm going to go and change this to a card layout. So within one click, I've changed the layout of my, my report. I'm going to shrink this down so I get some more uh, real estate over here. And now I'm ready to generate my next uh, grid. And in order to generate the next grid, I'm interested in seeing, well, based on my different types of cars, and I want to see what my cumulative sales are for that particular car. And I don't want a table format. I want to actually graph this out in the columns. So I change that. 
going to resize this very quickly. Here we go. And now I have a chart. Now, remember earlier I said it's very interactive. So if I click on my hybrid model here, these two sections or two um, areas of the report are interlinked with one another. Click on SUVs, and I only get SUVs. Click on SUVs again, and I get all my, my car types over there in my table. Now, I didn't have to do any coding. I didn't have to understand how it worked. It just works. Now, if I want to do a different type of chart, I click in an open area. I can come up here and say, I want to see my cells amount. Uh, and let's see, I want to do a trend chart. So I'm going to do it by quarters. I'm going to change this to a line chart. And now all of a sudden, I have a line chart that actually shows me what's going on over time. And I can see that my sales have increased, dropped a little bit, and increased again. And again, if I click on the hybrids up here, it changes so that I can see what my trend is. And interestingly enough, if I get a big, big jump here, I get a plateau, and I get a very high increased rate of sales near the end of my quarter three to quarter, four, uh, quarter one of 2011. And if I click on SUVs, I get a little different picture. This picture actually shows a very high, very much of a decline in sales. I get a spike of sales, and I've been declining. Now. As an analyst, I might come in here and say, well, this is great, but maybe I want to do some more analysis of this particular chart down here in the uh, lower right-hand corner. And maybe I want to take a look at it from a perspective of uh, how, did, how did gas prices affect the sales of my cars, my different types. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to home, and I'm going to say, I need a new view. Creates me a new view. And then I'm going to come back to the first view, and I'm going to grab a hold of this bottom chart down here, and I'm going to copy it. Gives me a warning that Silverlight's going to interact with my desktop. That's okay. And now I'm going to come and I'm going to paste this in. So now I have a nice little chart I used from the very first uh, first screen, and I'm going to expand this a little bit, shrink it down. And I'm going to change my sales amount to average gas price. Okay? So now that I got my average gas price, what might be interesting is to be able to take how did it affect my different types of cars. So I'm going to come over here back to my first screen. I'm going to copy that uh, bar chart that I have. Come back. I'm going to paste it in over here. And I'm going to do something a little different with it. This time, I'm going to actually look at it from a scatter perspective. A scatter chart is quite interesting, and it gives me a lot more capabilities of what I can actually do with my data. So here's one more example of a very rich uh, uh, tool that I can use. So right now, I don't have anything really on my, my y-axis, so I'm going to make a couple of changes here. And what I want to do is I want to see what my margin is. And I'm going to bring my margin down here to my y-axis. And that all of a sudden changes my scatter chart. So I can see by hovering over top each dot, I can see SUVs have a higher margin than, say, my hybrids. Now, that's great. But what I really also want to know is it'd be nice to put another measure on here. It'd be nice to know, well, what's my year-over-year -year sales growth? So I'm going to grab my year-over-year -year sales growth, and I'm going to drop it down here on what's called a size. And as soon as I do that, it resizes that, bu that little bubble for each one of these and gives me, by size, an indicator of what my year-over-year -year growth has been. So now I can see that hybrids have a 64% year-over-year growth, whereas my SUVs only have a 14% year-over-year growth. Now, this is great, but it doesn't give me an analysis yet of, well, that's only for the current year. It doesn't give me how did that actually transpire over time. And if you look at this, I'm kind of out of axis. But what I can do is I have something called a play axis. And I can drag my quarters down here to a play axis. And now 
I actually get sort of a, uh, a Windows Media kind of view where if I click on this little blue arrow down here in the corner, it's going to play through time how my sales have done. And if you notice, I had a big dip down here in uh, gas prices somewhere around the first quarter of 2009. And if I back my bar up here, you'll see that in 2009, as gas prices started going down, I started selling more and more SUVs. But then as my gas prices started coming back up again, my total volume of SUVs year over year growth, my dot got smaller. So while this analysis is pretty rudimentary for most of us, if you were to turn this loose on your real, real data, uh, you'd be very surprised what you could actually come out of this. Uh, and we were able to do this in a very quick manner.